Okay, so this is a short video that is to try and help people who are struggling with trying to understand these two species joint abundance diagrams and what they mean and why we can predict the dynamics of one species with respect to a zero net growth isocline but not uh, both species with respect to the same line. And so, uh, once again, just to reiterate, imagine that you have <coughs> A, uh, two species that are, com are potential competitors, or one species at least, is um, experiencing competition from a second species, and we'll call them species one and species two, and uh, we can jointly plot the abundance of those species in the environment. And that because we are uh, allowing individuals of the second species to uh, uh, or we're counting them with respect to how they might fill the carrying capacity of species one, uh, we can define the carrying capacity of species one as in uh, K1 um, uh, uh, down in the lower, sorry, uh, K1 down in the lower right here as the number of individuals that fill the carrying capacity of uh, that uh, species. But that if species two can, uh, individuals of species two, occupy some of the re same resource space and uh, fill the um, carrying capacity of that, or fill the environment for species one, then we can define a line that uh, represents the joint abundance of species one and species two that represent a full environment. And we call that uh, the zero net growth isocline. It's when the population, uh, the change in the population size of species one with respect to time equals zero, or a zero net growth isocline for species one. And so, uh, and, and what this means is that you can have anywhere up to the carrying capacity of species one of uh, it that fills the environment, or only species two, uh, but it, and that it fills the carrying capacity of species one uh, relative, you know, given a some interaction term that reflects how many individuals of species two it takes to fill up a, a, an individual's unit's worth of the carrying capacity of species one. As a consequence, this only ever speaks to the possible dynamics of species one. And when species one is below that carrying capacity, then there's room for growth in that species um, in the environment for that species, and it's above that carrying capacity, it's overshot its carrying capacity, and we're likely to see a decrease in uh, that population. Now, if I was to ask, what do we predict would happen to species two in this environment? The answer is we have no idea. Would it increase? Uh, would it decrease? Uh, we don't know because we do not know how species one influences species two's carrying capacity. It could be that you could have an infinite number of individuals of species one and it would have no impact on the carrying capacity of species two. This would then not be competition, but it would be amensalism, where species two had a negative impact on species one, but species one has no impact on species two whatsoever. So we can then uh, define a different zero net growth isocline, and we can put, and, and that would be uh, the if impact of species two, uh, or species one on species two. And again, that there's some carrying capacity for species two, and that we can fill that environment with sink simply species uh, two. Uh, but and, and that we can fill that environment also with just species one, and that's the uh, incremental rate at which uh, individuals of species one fill the carrying capacity of species two or the carrying capacity of species two over that interaction term. Now again, this is just how species one is influencing species two. As a consequence, it says nothing about what would happen to species one in the environment. And so, in fact, if you found some place along that zero net growth isocline, that's a zero net growth I, I, zero net growth isocline, just for species two. It's dn uh, two dt equals zero, and that if you said what would happen to species populations of species one if you were somewhere along that line, since everywhere along that line is to the left of the blue line in this diagram and below the carrying capacity for species one, we'd anticipate species one 
would uh, increase. But we can make a prediction uh, now with respect to what would happen to species two in this environment. And again, if species two was below that carrying capacity, this is the carrying capacity, the joint abundance that would fill the uh, carrying capacity of species two, uh, that, if, uh, that species two would increase. Well, species one would increase too because you're still below uh, that blue line, which is the uh, um, carrying capacity of species uh, two. Uh, or one rather, and if you're above that line, then the populations would decrease. But they only have reference to the prediction of the dynamics of the species for which this is its zero net growth isocline, and that and, and no other. Okay, I'm going to pause now, change the figure a little bit, and continue on. Okay, so the second question is when these lines cross, how can you tell whether it is a stable equilibrium or an unstable equilibrium? And in this case, it is simply uh, the idea that you can uh, use those trajectory lines to make a prediction of which way a, a population would move. So for example, uh, on this uh, diagram shown here, again, we're using uh, blue to represent the zero net growth isocline of species one and the dashed line for species two. And in this case, the line for uh, species two is labeled DN, D, D, uh, uh, DN2 DT equals zero. Just to keep the thing less cluttered, I haven't labeled the blue line, but that would be DN1 DT equals zero. And as a consequence, we know that uh, populations below the blue line of species one would increase, and that above that blue line, those uh, populations would decrease. And then we know that above the, line, the black line, with respect to species two, populations would decrease, and below the line, populations uh, would increase. And what this does then is shows us something about uh, the potential trajectories of the population and how it would grow. So if you're down here in the lower left corner where both populations are very small, and that's what it means to be near the axis, that, that down here in the corner is that you're near, near zero individuals of each species, that both populations would grow and you'd have a, um, uh, an increasing uh, populations of, of species one and species two, like this arrow that I am moving around. Uh, and similarly, uh, if you are above both uh, lines out here, you would have a decreasing uh, rate of growth of population one and a decreasing growth rate of population two, which would then increase, uh, would, which would result in a, oh, I should probably stop doing that, uh, decrease in both um, populations and a trajectory that would move uh, in this in this manner. And the tricky part then is in between uh, these zones where the lines have crossed. And down here in the lower right, we would see that if you're below the blue line, uh, population of species one would uh, increase because you're below the zero net growth isocline for species one, and that's what that predicts. And uh, here you're above the zero net growth isocline for species two, the dashed line, and that's what that species that line predicts. Only the population growth with these with respect to species two, and as a result, you'd have a trajectory that would move in this uh, some in this direction somewhere. And you could um, imagine that once you got down all the way to in, in which angle it is doesn't really matter. Imagine that you got down to here and you've uh, lost all of species two in the environment. Then you'd expect to have a trajectory that looked like this, where population uh, of species one would grow until you get to its carrying capacity and you get to this blue dot, which would then be a uh, carrying capacity of species one. And we call that a stable equilibrium. We call that a stable equilibrium because if you moved off of that point in some small manner, it would move back to this point. And that you can uh, convince yourself of the same sort of thing up over here, uh, where you're below this carrying capacity, of species two and the population would uh, uh, increase of species two. And here, uh, since you're above the blue line, uh, you have more of a joint abundance of species two and species one in the environment than is fills the uh, ca carrying capacity for species one. And you'd have a decrease in species one as a consequence of that. And that as a consequence, somewhere in this zone, 
uh, populations would uh, shift uh, in this direction and move again towards this other um, blue dot up here, also a stable equilibrium. So that the result is that you could have two different stable equilibria in this environment, uh, one that has only species two and another that has only species one. And in both cases, the introduction of the other species would tend uh, to move back towards this um, stable equilibrium where there's just one species. Now, where these two lines cross in the middle, where this open circle is, that is an equilibrium point as well. And you're on the zero net growth isoclines for both species exactly where that line crosses. So if you had exactly that number of N1 and N2, uh, that you are at an equilibrium in that you're at the carrying capacity for both species. It's referred to as an unstable equilibrium because if you move off of that point in any direction, the subsequent population trajectory would be towards either one of those blue circles and not back towards that equilibrium point, which makes it unstable. The other case that I'll talk about today then is the stable equilibrium uh, point where you have uh, those lines cross but now in the different direction where individual species are more self-limiting than other limiting. And again, I've labeled the zero net growth isocline for DN2DT, the da black dash line, which is predicting dynamics with respect to species two but not species one. And so it's, uh, it's projecting whether species would increase or decrease. And when you're in this environment, anywhere uh, above the blue, uh, the this black line with respect to species two, populations would decrease. And I'm going to leave that arrow right there. And anywhere uh, uh, below that black line, populations we would ex predict would increase. And that means down here uh, they'd increase. Over here they would increase as well. I'll leave that line there. And with respect to species one. Uh, that is the blue line, which is the zero net growth isocline for that species. Anywhere to the left of that blue line, we expect species uh, uh, populations of species one to increase, and I'll leave that there. And above that line, we'd expect them to, to decrease. And that we can see then that um, the trajectory of these populations would be such that wherever you are on that graph, uh, you would move towards this equilibrium point that is at the intersection of the two species. And that is the condition under which we have what we would call a stable two-species equilibrium, where uh, if you moved off that point a little bit, which inevitably happens because of environmental variation, that population trajectories would move, tend to move it back towards that point in the middle that has stable coexistence of two species. And then the final thing that I'll talk about in, in this uh, video is this uh, uh, idea of what that slope of that line means, that here are three hypothetical uh, slopes of lines of a zero net growth isocline for species one. So it's just uh, with respect to the carrying capacity of species one and predicting species one dynamics. And that uh, one of those lines is, is uh, very steep and ends up way up here, suggesting that it would require an awful lot of uh, individuals of uh, uh, N2 uh, to um, fill that carrying capacity of species, uh, of species one. Uh, whereas the one in the middle suggests that there are fewer individuals of N2 that would be required to fill that uh, carrying capacity in this joint abundance diagram, and the red one down the bottom, even fewer. And what that means is that as there are fewer individuals of the second species that are required to fill the carrying capacity of the first species, it means that they're having larger and larger incremental effects on the carrying capacity of that first species. And as a consequence, we can th uh, think then about that uh, what's different, oops, what happened, just hang on. Okay, what's different among those uh, lines is not the carrying capacity of species one, only that interaction term. And so it's that interaction term, the effect of one species on the other, that determines um, uh, whether these species are more or less likely to coexist. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, good luck.